Hi, kids. Okay. Um, hey, I'm here to introduce uh, to you uh, the next unit, which is on fluids. So, um, probably want to get your notebook out and take some notes. So, here we go. All right. So, this is about fluids. All right. Uh, first, okay. Um, a fluid is uh, something that uh, fills up its container. Okay. So, it is something that fills up its okay. For example, okay, water is a fluid because if you have a you know beaker and you pour some water in it, then uh, it fills it up. Okay, uh, that uh, air is a fluid because again it fills up its container. Uh, if I had a block of wood, that would not be a fluid, because if I took a block of wood and I put it in a beaker, it's not going to fill it up. So it's off. That's what a fluid is. Fluid is something that contains its, uh, uh, that fills up its container. Uh, let's see. Oh, along those lines too. Uh, there are two types of fluids that we're going to talk about: liquids and gases. Uh, but uh, liquids and gases. Uh, a liquid, okay, is uh, going to be something that you cannot compress. Uh, water, you can't, you know, if you push on it, you can't compress it. Uh, where a gas, you obviously can compress. So this, the difference is, you cannot compress it, and the difference here is you can compress it. So there you have uh, our intro to fluids. Um, we are also going to be starting by talking about static fluids. Okay. Uh, that just means a fluid at rest. Okay. Later on in this unit, we'll talk about dynamic fluids, fluids in motion. But for now, we're going to start with uh, fluids at rest. Um, okay. So that's our little basic intro. Now with fluids, because typically, you know, if I have a glass of water uh, or if I have some air, it's hard for me to exactly figure out how much stuff I have. So where before we, we talk about mass, it's going to make more sense with a fluid to talk about the density. Okay, so the density okay, of a fluid, and hopefully from being alive for, I don't know, 15 years or however long you've been alive, uh, you have you can come up with a definition of density. So yes, density is going to be mass divided by okay, volume. Okay, it's mass over volume. Uh, the symbol for density is uh, Greek symbol rho. Uh, so this is really density equals mass over volume. Okay, so that uh, if you look at the units for density, this is going to be kilograms, and then volume would be something like, oh, meters cubed, okay? Uh, or it could be centimeters cubed. Now, most of the time in here, we are going to be using kilograms and meters. So there you have it for that. Okay, uh, sense density. Um, but again, like we're before, for example, we were, if we were talking about potential energy, you would say, well, potential energy equals mgy, okay, potential energy due to gravity. Now what we're going to do instead is we're going to say, well, if I want to figure out the potential energy, let's say, of a bunch of fluid, it, well, instead of the mass, we would say this, because this equals rho times v, so I would say rho times v, there's my mass, g, and then y. But to, does that make sense where I'm getting the mass from? So just get used to that. We're going to be doing that a bunch in this unit where we'll be doing, you know, mass. Instead of mass, we're going to say, well, mass is the density times the volume, which really is the mass. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we've got that. Um, the fluid that we're probably referring to most in this unit is water. So you should probably know the density of water. Um, Okay, the density of water is one, so the density of water equals 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. 
Okay. That means if I had, you know, one of these things and I made a cube out of it, and I filled it all up with water. Now that's going to be a lot of water, as you can imagine. Uh, and water is, uh, you know, fairly dense. Uh, that to you would have, that would be a thousand kilograms. That would be the mass of it. So that it would weigh 1,000 times 9.8, so 9,800 newtons. Uh, divide that by four roughly and you get however many pounds, okay? But that's that. Um, because water is so important, a lot of times we will relate things to water uh, and that's called the specific gravity. So, for example, you guys should have this someplace in your packet or someplace. This is the little just common substances. If you look on here, the... Uh, density of, let's say, ice, for example. So the density of ice is, what is it, 917, 917 kilograms per meter cubed, where the density of iron is 7,860 kilogram per meter cubed. Okay, so that means, okay, and you guys know this, duh, but you guys know that uh, ice floats on water because, hey, look, it's less dense than water. Uh, you guys know that if you put a piece of iron in water, it's going to sink because, again, hey, it's more dense than uh, water. Well, it's actually a little more complicated than that because, you know, you have an iron boat. It could float. And we'll, we'll talk about that later on, so don't, don't panic. Um, but, uh, so, you, yeah, that's going to be... This, so what, what happens if we talk about water as our example, is that this is called specific gravity, and you may have talked about this in your chemistry class last year, but uh, specific gravity, specific, okay, where what is, essentially what it's doing is it's relating everything to uh, to water. So it's the ratio of the density of the object compared to water. So ratio of density of material to water's density. So for example, okay, the specific gravity for ice okay, would be 0.917, okay? Because that's the ratio of ice to water, okay? For iron, the specific gravity would be 7.86, because again, that's the ratio of that to that. So the specific gravity, so ice's specific gravity would be point nine one seven where iron's specific gravity would be seven point eight six and again it doesn't have units because we're talking about a ratio so anyway that's our basic uh, intro so i'm gonna come back in just a minute bye kids